this George from Hitech Legion. Naturally, we're seeing a huge uh, upswing in the use of liquid cooling. And at the heart of any liquid cooling loop is gonna be your water blocks. It's actually what gets the heat away from your component and transfers it to the liquid, keeping the component cool. Now, CPU water blocks is gonna be our most popular uh, segment, as more people are cooling CPUs than anything else with water cooling these days. Now, in terms of this, we're gonna add a couple of uh, new CPU water blocks into our test today uh, from two manufacturers that are very large but couldn't be any more different. First gonna be the Thermaltake Pacific W1. The W1 is Thermaltake's first uh, foray into discrete liquid cooling in quite some time. Many people don't realize Thermaltake actually was one of the first to try and bring liquid cooling to the mainstream. The other is from EK Waterblocks, who as their name suggests, does nothing but liquid cooling. They are a very, very specialized manufacturer and they've been around for a long time. And they're probably the biggest name in discrete liquid cooling components today. And we're gonna to be taking a look at their new Supremacy Evo. Many people don't realize that Thermaltake was actually the first mass uh, merch company to try and bring liquid cooling into the mainstream. Uh, they were Thermaltake's always been a very adventurous manufacturer in their cooling, and they've made some of the best air coolers along the way. And they tried to you know continue that a long time ago with the Big Water series, uh, which was an idea ahead of its time, just didn't quite work out. So now you know that uh, liquid cooling is becoming more and more mainstream. Thermal takes they can dive back into the water. And they're starting out with the, the new Pacific series, which has some really cool components, uh, all aluminum brazed radiators and uh, D5 pumps, very nice reservoirs. And the flagship CPU block in the series is the Pacific W1 that you see here. Um, really nicely done, as you see, all copper base, all metal outside, G uh, one quarter inch fittings. So uh, all set for Intel, all current sockets, LGA 1150 series, including 1151, uh, 2011, 1366, 775, as well as AMD, uh, AM2, AM3, FM1, FM2. So they're really looking to make a splash back into the water, as you know, pun intended or not intended, uh, with liquid cooling. And they definitely look like they're on the right track. The Pacific W1 is a good looking piece, as you see, very, very heavy, 345 grams, definitely the heaviest of the CPU blocks uh, I've ever picked up, and very, very solidly put together, as you see. So let's get a closer look at the W1 itself. Taking a closer look at the Pacific W1, uh, as you see, very nicely finished, um, all dark nickel up top with Thermaltake logo in black, as you see, on the rear, nickel plated copper on the cold plate, machine, uh, machine to a really nice finish, nice and smooth. Your inserts are interchangeable for AMD and for uh, Intel two G1 quarter inch ports, which of course come covered. And with the peak inside, you can actually see uh, the micro channels, 0.15 millimeters on the micro channel. So really fine uh, micro channel there. Now the W Pacific W1 is not directional. You can use either port for in or for out. As all you have going on here is the water flows through over the micro channels, there is a center silicone bar which forces the water down against the micro channels, so it doesn't matter which direction it's going. The W1 uh, is a good looking piece. Now, something to keep in mind if you are using AMD with the retention brackets the way they are, the AMD retention brackets will go up here and on the side, so when you mount it, it will be a goofy mount side to side, and thermal take will be sideways in the case. Look at the included parts with the Pacific W1. First thing you come across, installation manual. Um, there's parts list and then simply exploded views of each different install. So no words, no explanation, but pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you look at the picture, it's pretty simple, you know, pretty uh, apparent how it goes together. Next, very simply, reminder to leak check outside of the case. Warranty card. One size fits all backplate, washers, AMD brackets, as well as screws and nuts required for the installation. Very, very simple install kit from Thermaltake. Also, uh, just enough thermal interface material for probably two, maybe three 
seatings. Uh, it is just standard off-shelf thermal take uh, that's included with all their coolers. Uh, if you're liquid cooling, probably you're going to be going to an aftermarket uh, thermal interface material anyway. And mounting a Pacific W1. First step, back plate. You're going to put your screws through the appropriate holes in the back plate for the CPU socket you're using. We're doing an LGA 1150 series today. And of course, the spongy side will go towards the motherboard with the metal side away from the motherboard. Go back, put it into place. And of course, see the four screws will pop right through. And we're gonna put four washers on them. And once they're on, four retainers. Thread on to each screw. And you want to bring them down. You want to snug them up. You don't want to over tighten them. You just want it snug, keeping the back plate in place. No need for tools here. Just hand tight. And of course, all four corners will go on. And with standoffs in place, we'll then drop the block right onto the four screws. And notice I put the thermal interface material on prior to putting the block on. Standard amount about the size of two grains of rice. And we're going to take four more washers onto the screws. And finally, four end caps. Get them started. And it's a very, very low pressure mount at this point. Um, the end caps just about touch the block when they're all the way in. You will feel a stop. They do have a stop point, so when they stop turning, you're simply going to want to stop. Once again, you're hand tightening. Don't use any tools at this point. And you'll also know you've got to stop because this screw in the back, you'll feel, actually feel a turn if you feel back there. And you're in place. Mounted up in the case, the Thermal Take Pacific W1. Definitely a good looking piece. Um, all metal, as we say. Very, very sturdy looking. And uh, you've got the entire black with Thermal Take logo. So depending on what fittings you're using, you can definitely accent it. Like I say, no um, provisions for lighting of any kind. So anything, you know, would have to be shining on it rather than having it glow. But all in all, good looking. Now we're going to test it out. Very, very simple procedure. We've actually got uh, SwiftTech H220X 240 millimeter radiator, MCP30X pump, um, a small reservoir that Performance PCs has done a couple of additions to for us um, with quick disconnects, and more importantly, um, liquid temperature uh, sensor built in. So we're actually going to be able to uh, test the temperature of the core to the liquid, which is really the telling sign of the, of the uh, CPU block itself. It takes everything else out of the equation, and it's showing exactly how well the CPU block is performing. So let's get the quick disconnects hooked up, and we're going to move on to the testing. Taking a look at the performance of the Thermal Take Pacific W1. We use a 4770K at 4.6 gigahertz, 1.275 volts for the testing. The number we really want to be concerned with here is the quarter liquid delta, which is the dark blue bar. Now, taking a look at that, it's going to give you the actual performance of the CPU block itself, how well it translates the heat from the core to the uh, liquid. So now, with that in mind, the Thermal Take Pacific W1 comes in right around the middle of the pack. Um, 
which is definitely not a bad thing. It's keeping some very good company in the Apogee XL and the XSPC Raystorm. Uh, the Raystorm coming in about a half a degree behind it, that is our performance value leader. And the uh, W1 uh, basically matching the Apogee XL, which is a very, very good 6995 block, same price point as the Pacific W1. Now, also I wanna point out the Apogee XL is also marketed as the Thermaltake W2. So, uh, Thermaltake does have two pieces with very, very good numbers uh, as far as thermal performance. So, being totally honest here, you know, going in I had absolutely no idea what to expect from the Pacific W1. We have no track record, of course, with Thermaltake doing discrete liquid cooling uh, components, at least not recently. And, um, you know, I didn't know whether this was going to be... You know, the best CPU block that's come to market. I didn't know if it was going to lag behind it. I didn't know if it was going to, you know, bust an O-ring and leak all over the place. It just had no idea what was going to happen. Now, uh, fortunately, you know, or unfortunately, none of those things happened. Uh, the W1 performed very well. It, you know, sat right in the middle of its price point uh, as far as CPU blocks go, as far as performance. You know, it kept up with, you know, the race storms, kept up... Um, with the SwiftTech Apogee XL for the most part, which also happens to be marketed as the Pacific W2 with the Thermaltake logo rather than the SwiftTech logo, just in case you're wondering. Um, now, the Thermaltake itself, the W1 has, you know, its high points and low points. Um, you know, very, very solidly put together, very, very angular. There's nothing organic about it. If you're going for a really cold looking build, this is going to be a great CPU block to go with. You know, a lot of people, you know, want LEDs and whatnot. This is obviously not going to be the piece for them. But like I say, cold calculated type build, it's going to look really good in the case. Uh, as I say, great construction, nice mill on the CPU block itself. Um, or I should say on the contact plate. So, you know, well put together. It, you know, does have a, you know, slightly cold feeling. Uh, very simple as far as the cooling itself goes, which allows it to be omnidirectional. So, you know, makes it a little bit more flexible, a little easier to work with, um, you know, if you're running your loop, uh, essentially what some consider backwards, going from your GPU into your CPU or whatnot. So it is, a, you know, a bit easy to work with. Um, as far as the installation goes, um, in all honesty, I don't like the install kit one bit. I think it's totally underdeveloped. It does get the job done, but, you know, working with it, you know, especially compared to the other blocks I was working with in this test, it was like, uh, I felt like I was mounting a $20 air cooler. But um, other than that, you know, I mean, you know, the end result was fine. It went in. It, you know, the job got done, you know, it's a cumbersome mounting kit, and that's really the only knock I could give the Pacific W1. Other than that, you know, performance was fine and whatnot. You know, it's very, very average for its price point. With that said, I'm gonna give the uh, Pacific W1 a High Tech Legion Silver Award. You know, like I say, except for the install kit, nothing bad to say about it, but nothing great to say about it either. However, I do think this shows that Thermal Take is on the right track. They're gonna be a player in uh, liquid cooling, and I'm really interested to see what they do next, and I'm really looking forward to it.